Welcome to the Métis Nation of Alberta's presentation on chronic wasting disease and caribou conservation. This presentation will discuss what chronic wasting disease is, how it is managed, some ways it may impact Métis citizens, and lastly, it will provide some ways for Métis citizens to contribute to CWD management and caribou conservation efforts. CWD, or chronic wasting disease, is a fatal, contagious, neurological disease affecting cervid populations such as deer, caribou or reindeer, elk, and moose. It was first discovered in 1967 in Colorado and has since spread across many jurisdictions in North America. A misfolded protein, or prion, causes degeneration of the brains of infected animals, resulting in emaciation, abnormal behavior, loss of bodily functions, and eventually death. At this time, there's no treatment or vaccine. Infected animals easily transfer the infectious agents through bodily fluids such as saliva, feces, and urine. These infectious agents can last years in soil and water, making the disease difficult to eliminate from an area. CWD can be transferred through animal-to-animal -animal interactions and can easily be passed from mothers to their offspring. CWD prevalence in captive deer populations has reached as high as 80% infected, while wild populations are typically low, but some areas have reported rates as high as 25% infected. Early signs of CWD include weight loss, decreased social interaction, loss of awareness, and repetitive movements. More advanced signs include drooping head and ears, teeth grinding, and excessive salivation. The pictures in this slide illustrate a deer showing signs of CWD, picture A, and a deer without signs of CWD, picture B. It's important to note that the incubation period for CWD is long, meaning that visible signs of the disease can take years to show for some infected individuals. Even that healthy looking deer in picture B could still be infected with CWD. CWD has been detected in 26 US states and three Canadian provinces across North America. In Alberta, CWD first appeared in 2005 in southeastern Alberta and has since continued to spread, reaching areas as far west as Calgary and as far north as Edmonton. The province of Alberta is divided into a series of wildlife management units, or WMUs. Wildlife within the boundaries of each wildlife management unit is managed by Alberta Environment and Parks, according to the regulations established in Alberta's Wildlife Act. As of 2020, CWD has been detected in 65 Alberta wildlife management units. Jurisdictions have tried a variety of strategies to manage CWD. Strategies have focused primarily on the selective removal of infected individuals from herds, removal of the deer most prone to infection within a herd, and the culling of deer herds to reduce populations. Other strategies have included reducing artificial points where deer gather, like baits or grain bins, and potentially increasing harvest around these points. Unfortunately, control efforts to date have seen limited success, with most jurisdictions experiencing continued spread and increasing prevalence of CWD. Management strategies in Alberta have varied since CWD arrived in 2005, but increased harvests in CWD-infected wildlife management units, or WMUs, are expected to continue, specifically targeting male mule deer, the species and sex contributing to the largest number of CWD cases in Alberta. As a Métis citizen, you may be wondering how CWD could affect you. CWD's impact on cervid populations through both infection and management strategies have the potential to affect Métis people's ability to exercise their rights, their relationship with the land, their culture and identity, and the transmission of knowledge and skills within the Métis community. Some examples of potential impacts can include food security, loss of hunting opportunity or increased effort, and mandatory participation in surveillance programs. CWD can make it difficult for those who rely on the meat harvested from wild deer to supplement their diets. While no human has contracted CWD despite many instances of CWD infected meat being consumed, public health agencies in Canada and the United States recommend avoiding consumption. Individuals who follow this recommendation may need to harvest additional deer if initial harvests are CWD positive, or to decrease the chances of harvesting CWD infected deer, individuals might have to travel to different areas, increasing the effort it takes to harvest. If CWD management strategies involve lowering deer densities in some areas, this may also result in more effort for harvesters. Additionally, the Government of Alberta designates some wildlife management units for mandatory CWD testing. 
All hunters, including Métis citizens, are required to participate when harvesting from these areas, which will take time and effort and may delay the, the utilization of the meat as citizens await test results. The MNA is interested in exploring other potential impacts citizens have experienced. This information will be gathered through our citizen engagements. Now that I've told you about CWD and how it can affect you, I want to discuss someone else it might affect, the caribou. There are currently 12 boreal and 5 southern mountain herds of woodland caribou in Alberta, with ranges covering 23% of Alberta. Most are managed by the government of Alberta, but some mountain herds residing within national parks are managed by the federal government. Many of the woodland caribou populations in Alberta have been declining for decades. Only four of these herds are considered stable, while the rest are considered declining. Woodland caribou are listed as threatened through both provincial and federal species at risk legislation. These caribou declines can be attributed to human landscape and habitat disturbances and predation. Habitat alteration and disturbance through industrial activities, like forestry and oil and gas, can reduce the quality and extent of the range used by caribou. Additionally, the creation of linear features, such as roads and seismic lines, can increase the efficiency of travel and hunting success for predators, consequently increasing caribou mortality. The Federal Recovery Strategy identified a minimum of 65% undisturbed habitat in each range to ensure populations were self-sustaining. All caribou populations are currently below the minimum threshold. So how did things get so bad? Unfortunately, there were calls to address caribou declines as early as the 1970s. By 1981, the government responded by cancelling recreational caribou hunting. Many Indigenous communities followed suit in an attempt to help caribou recover. Métis citizens have not resumed caribou harvesting to this day. Alberta listed caribou as endangered in 1987 and was later redesignated as threatened when the Wildlife Act was updated with new categories. By 2003, the woodland caribou were also listed as threatened at the federal level. This prompted the federal government to develop a recovery strategy outlining habitat management objectives required to achieve self-sustaining populations in 2012. The government of Alberta was given five years to develop a provincial caribou management plan, which they released as a draft in 2017. It was never implemented. Last year, in 2020, the government of Alberta and government of Canada entered into a new conservation agreement where Alberta agreed to draft new management plans over the next five years for all provincially managed caribou ranges. Throughout this 50 year period seen on this timeline here, a variety of provincial recovery plans and strategies were developed and none of them implemented. Some efforts were made to slow new disturbances, but presently habitat continues to degrade and caribou populations continue to decline. So what's happening now? The Alberta government committed to developing a caribou recovery strategy for each of the herds they manage using the habitat objectives defined by the Government of Canada's Woodland Caribou Recovery Strategy. The Government of Alberta maintains their goal to achieve self-sustaining caribou populations while protecting jobs and the economy. They are establishing and tasking caribou sub-regional task forces comprised of reps from government, Indigenous communities, industry, and other stakeholders to develop sub-regional plans to address immediate and long-term habitat and population objectives for each caribou herd. Two plans were released this March, which the MA was involved in developing, and the remaining plans are expected to be released in the next few years. While these plans are intended to be implemented soon, habitat-related outcomes may not be achieved for 100 years. Caribou recovery in Alberta is expected to be slow, leaving the herds vulnerable for decades to come. Additional stressors have the potential to delay or even halt the recovery progress. Unfortunately, CWD in Alberta has the potential to be another barrier to caribou recovery soon. Caribou ranges cover almost 23% of the province. Herds reside primarily in the northern boreal zones and western mountain zones. CWD has been progressively spreading across Alberta since 2005, starting in the southeast and expanding northward and westward. It has been spreading along watersheds. We're now seeing some wildlife management units with cases of CWD within 100 kilometers of some caribou ranges. If CWD continues to spread, Alberta's already vulnerable caribou herds might be at risk of infection. So what can Métis citizens do to help manage CWD and conserve caribou? There's a few ways you can contribute. One, participate in Alberta's CWD surveillance program. Two, 
Use best practices when you're involved in harvesting deer to prevent further spread of CWD. And three, stay informed and help spread the word. Make sure people in your social circles know about these issues and how to help. In Alberta, CWD surveillance programs focused on both farmed and wild cervid populations have been ongoing since 1996. Alberta Agriculture and Forestry runs the program dedicated to farmed cervids, while Alberta Environment and Parks runs the program dedicated to wild cervids. Farmed cervids are tested when imported or upon their death for any reason, including when they are slaughtered for meat. The wild cervid program is based largely on submission of animal heads by hunters, focused on deer, elk, and moose. This program allows the Government of Alberta to assess the presence and absence of CWD in wildlife management units across Alberta and monitor the spread of CWD in wild cervid populations. The Deer Head Testing Program accepts voluntary head submission of deer harvested from anywhere in Alberta. This allows harvesters to ensure their meat is safe to eat and helps detect CWD when it spreads to new areas. However, submissions in or near CWD infected areas are often encouraged or even mandatory. The Government of Alberta designates wildlife management units, which require mandatory CWD testing for the heads of all deer harvested within them, while others only require the heads of harvested mule deer. The updated CWD infected wildlife management units and mandatory submission wildlife management units are provided in the Alberta hunting regulations each year. Since CWD first appeared in Alberta in 2005, the deer head testing program has detected 3,585 cases from hunters submitted deer heads. In the most recent hunting season, the program tested 8,905 deer heads, which detected 927 cases of CWD. The majority of cases were detected in mule deer populations. White-tailed deer cases were the second most frequent, with 168 detected. There were no CWD cases detected for moose this year, despite two cases occurring last year. And lastly, there were five cases of infected elk, which were primarily located in the Suffield Canadian Forces base. If you wish to, are required to, participate in the Government of Alberta's Chronic Wasting Disease Surveillance Program, I'm now going to tell you how to submit a head for testing. After harvesting a deer, elk, or moose, remove the head at the base of the skull. Put the head in a plastic bag and freeze it as soon as you're able. As soon as possible, bring the frozen head to a Fish and Wildlife office during office hours or from September to mid-December. There are also 24-hour freezer locations where heads can be dropped off. 24-hour freezer locations are listed on the Government of Alberta website and in the Alberta hunting regulations. At the drop-off location, Fill out a green CWD identification label and attach it to the head. Place the head back in the bag and put it in the freezer. You'll then be contacted with the test results using the information provided on the label. It's important to note that deer heads submitted for testing will not be returned to you. Fortunately, you have the option to remove the antlers and antler skull plate if you can avoid damaging the required tissues for testing or if you wish to keep the head for a full skull mount or European mount. The Government of Alberta asks you to submit the following two groups of tissues. One, all tissues from the roof of the mouth at the back of the throat, including lymph nodes. And two, the part of the brain connecting to the spinal cord. Bag these two samples separately and then submit them together to a Fish and Wildlife Office or 24-hour freezer location. These are the green CWD labels you'll need to fill out when you submit a cervid head, such as a deer head, for testing. I'll use a deer head for the purpose of this explanation. These labels are double-sided, with hunter information on the front and deer information on the back. While these labels ask for lots of information, you aren't required to provide all of it. For example, you don't need to provide the coordinates of where your deer was harvested. Just the wildlife management unit will do. A Métis ID number isn't necessary just your name and contact information. Also, if you're harvesting under the Métis harvesting policy, you don't need to provide a tag number because there isn't one. Just leave it blank. The only pieces of information stored in the CWD database are the test results and the wildlife management unit the deer was harvested from. The contact info you provide will be used to communicate your test results to you. If you have an Alberta Realm account, you will be contacted by email. If you do not, you will be contacted by phone. You'll only be contacted if your deer tests positive for CWD.
The timing for test results is variable and can even take up to three to four months if submitted during peak times. In addition to participating in surveillance, you can help stop the spread of CWD by using good field practices. Aside from deer-to-deer -deer transmission, the transport of hunter-killed deer carcasses has been another source of the spread for, spread for CWD. Primes build up in the brains, eyes, spinal cord, tonsils, spleen, and lymph nodes of infected cervids. If you transport any of these tissues to a non-CWD area, there's a potential for spread as the prions can stay on the landscape for years. There are a variety of hunter safety and meat processing guides available that provide the best practices for handling harvested deer infected with CWD. The government of Alberta has also provided some carcass disposal guidelines to consider, which suggests to do the following. Avoid severing the spinal cord when deboning meat. Leave the carcass at the kill site if possible. If transport is required, burn and bury the carcass or dispose of it in a landfill. The last way to get involved in CWD surveillance and help protect caribou is to stay informed and ensure others are too. Individuals who are not familiar with CWD and best field practices may spread it unknowingly. Surveillance of CWD in Alberta is also dependent on hunter participation. It is important for anyone involved in deer harvesting activities to be familiar with CWD and Alberta's CWD surveillance program. You can keep up to date on the status of CWD in Alberta and the mandatory testing wildlife management units by viewing the Alberta hunting regulations each year. Please take the time to share about these issues in your social circles. The MA is looking to support its citizens in CWD awareness and education. This presentation was developed as part of a CWD and caribou conservation project called Chronic Wasting Disease and Caribou Conservation in Alberta, a Métis Lens, which seeks to provide education about cultural and harvesting rights, engage with Métis citizens about caribou conservation, and to create CWD educational and awareness materials from a Métis sensitive perspective. Citizen feedback collected from engagements will be used to help inform the development of educational and awareness materials to share with Métis citizens later this year and help the MA decide what future involvement in CWD surveillance and caribou conservation should look like. You may have already seen some of our early CWD awareness posts on the MA social media and newsletter last fall, like the one featured on this slide. The MA also has staff members who are part of National Caribou Conservation Committee work, where CWD is also discussed. As you leave this presentation, here's a quick recap of some final things to keep in mind. CWD is a fatal disease which impacts all cervids. CWD is currently spreading across Alberta. CWD has an impact on not only deer populations, but also Métis citizens who have cultural connections with them and rely on them for food. Caribou have experienced significant declines and are vulnerable. They are at risk for CWD. And lastly, Métis citizens can help monitor and prevent the spread of CWD, which will help to protect caribou. Thank you for watching our presentation on caribou conservation and chronic wasting disease.